Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. I thought we would talk. I would talk a little bit about um, the creative process and the importance of receptivity and sponta uh, spontaneity in the process. Um, we've been doing a lot of um, expressive painting in relation to Kandinsky lately, and. Um, I have received some emails about um, the difficulty of that in trusting your your own process, and um, and also someone actually asked the question, um, what is the point of this? Um, yeah, that's a really that's a really good question because you know sometimes when you're working in your creative process, you're wondering, okay, well I'm doing this, but you know, what's the point of this? I'm, you know, I'm not going to sell it. Um, it's not going to be something I put on my wall necessarily. Um, so what can I do with this, this, uh, this process? Well, it's my thoughts that um, the process itself is valuable and um, I don't think it's important to uh, reach a, a point of result as far as art is concerned, I think that it's important to give yourself permission to experiment with a particular media or technique and that that is important in itself. It doesn't have to be something that you show anybody, that you, um, that you put on your wall, that you sell. Although you might, you know, sometimes um, creative play is what I call it. Um, I know that myself, when I'm going through a block um, in my creativity, really playing and experimenting and just allowing myself the freedom of the process is, is an important part of uh, breaking through and getting through a block. Um, so, you know, I think that process is, is very important. It, it's something that I stress a great deal in my classes when I teach my kids. Um, it's, a, it's important when I teach my workshops um, and also important in relation to myself. And this is the way I will be teaching in the class as well. Um, so, um, when you are reaching a point where you're questioning yourself, it's usually your sensor, it's usually the voices that, um, the gremlins that are coming in and, and really trying to get you to stop what you're doing. Um, especially if you are a result, you know, you, you really, really believe that a result is, is the most important thing in um, maybe your perfectionist even. Um, but I'm really trying to teach you to be more free, uh, to be more receptive to what's going on with your colors and your expression um, when you're doing your painting. Now, this is not the only way to do art. There's different ways of doing art. Um, sometimes you do plan. Sometimes you do lots of sketches before you put it on canvas. Sometimes you do research, um, you do try to get accuracy, um, you do use different tools and techniques for proportion and all that. And I teach that as well. Um, you know, and if you're interested in that kind of art, then you can get a hold of me and I can, I can put together a class for you. Um, I can even teach you individually. It doesn't mean that you have to, I have to have a whole bunch of people in this class. So if you're interested in things like color mixing and basic stuff to do with art skills, definitely, definitely, um, you know, contact me. But this class specifically, um, the reason why we're doing this is because um, the artists will be talking about in the class we're doing on modern art, spirituality, and creativity, uh, they were very innovative. They were very open to new ways of doing art, and they broke through ways of doing art so that 
you know, really it introduced um, a lot of uh, techniques that we use today. And so Kodinsky was one um, who did that. And you have already experienced that in some of the paintings you've done with his work, uh, with his style. Um, now, I'm not really sure exactly how he did his work. You know, I don't know if he, you know, practiced this particular technique until he got it, what he, you know, got it right, or if he just um, painted what he felt or painted what was going on at the, at the time. Um, you know, nobody really knows. You know, you'd have to go back in time to really, really, really know exactly why or how he did his work. Um, there are lots of books written on his work, and if you're interested in finding out more about Kodinsky, you can do that. And, of course, online stuff is available. Um, but really, it's all that is is just uh, opinion. And even historical things that are written about him is based on thoughts and opinion. It's really not anything that we know. Um, but that's not the important thing. That's not really why I'm teaching you this class. Art history is very important because we get to understand the artists more and we get to understand their work more. And so when we do a painting that's based on a particular artist or we do a mixed media piece or whatever, collage, whatever we're going to be doing in the future. Um, really, that's the, that's the importance of this class, is to teach you and to, you know, let you experience it in your own uh, way of doing things. So, again, the creative process is individual. You know, you'll all have individual ways of being creative. And I also want you to start keeping a journal of your own creative process. Um, you know, it's important to know what gets you creative, what inspires you, um, what colors are you attracted to, what, what do you like to do uh, when you do create creativity, what do you like to work in, in fact. What would you like to experiment more in? I mean, what would you like to try more instead of, you know, what you do already? Um, that's why I introduced the markers. Not only that, but it was, it was something that I saw on um, Expressive Art and Activities. I believe that's the group it's called. And um, I was very excited about the fact that she used markers and I wanted to really introduce you to the fact that you don't necessarily have to just use paint, that you can use other things to be creative, especially when you are experimenting. Now, once you get the idea of what all these different artists do or have done or did, um, then you can use that in your own work. It breaks through um, your ordinary way of doing things, it gives you opportunities to experiment um, with other ways of uh, painting or doing your mixed media pieces. Besides, it's a lot of fun. And so I hope you're having a lot of fun in doing your, um, your art and um, you're experimenting and allowing yourself receptivity and freedom in your work. And um, I'd really love to see what you do. And um, I want to tell you that we will be going on now, um, probably within this next week. Probably next week we will be going on to the artist um, by the name of Paul Clay. And he was an amazing, amazing artist. And I think you'll find his work and some of his techniques that he did very innovative. And um, we'll be experimenting with some of his things that he did. He did a lot of mixed media techniques and so we're going to be experimenting with some of this stuff. And also how he was inspired by color and uh, where he got his idea from uh, doing the mosaics and um, because he traveled a lot and so in his travels he saw a lot of things and uh, he was inspired and that's where it came up in his work. We'll also be talking about 